Welcome back to Jackalope Fest 2022. We have been playing this crazy game with the rain all day today, but you know what? We're finally going to have an event here. We have the bouldering competition coming up in just a short few moments. You can see the athletes getting ready to take this on. But we had some crazy rain delays. We had some thunder and lightning. How's it going, everyone? Todd Richards, right? This man right here, Pete Woods, is going to tell me all about bouldering because I literally know nothing. Todd, I got you. Um, it seems complicated, and then we're going to break it all down, and you'll be an expert by the time we get through the first couple boulders. Well, Don't even worry about I'm it. I'm counting on you. But we've had a crazy day here. Like I said, you can see the raindrops on the screen behind us. We've been evacuated from the site. We've repopulated the site. You see it right here as the thunderstorms came in. They wanted everyone out of here. Me, I kept a headset on with a bunch of electrical equipment at my feet to shut this thing down. But now we are back. They are getting it going, getting ready here to start this competition. Yeah, we're right into it here. Um, there's some things we're gonna get to. You know, they've, they've had a little bit of time to look at these boulders. We'll sort of talk about that. But Todd, these are the first two climbers out. First boulders, they've had time to preview it so they know what's coming. And now it's down to execution. The women's boulder here on the right, this is about a 30 degree overhanging wall. Just adds a little element of a little more squeeze required. And these, this kind of movement, you know, opening the elevator door. We're trying to test climbers. That's, many different styles of movement and strength as we possibly can. Right, so once again, give us the, the rules here. How does this play out? What you see on the boulder here, the green tape at the bottom is the start of the boulder. The green tape at the top is the top of the boulder. Tops are what we care about. The more tops and the least number of tries is going to win this thing. You have four boulders per gender, six finalists in each gender. So six climbers are going to come out. There we see a top from our first male competitor, Solomon Barth, and that's what it's all about. So once Taya Wolf on your right either runs out of clock, four minutes on the bottom of the screen, yep. or tops this boulder, we move on to the next two. So all the athletes are gonna come out and they're gonna move across boulder one, two, three, and four. And one of the things I find so fascinating about this, just as you've been kind of educating me on this sport, is the fact that they come out here and they can't actually practice any of this. They get to look at it, they try to unlock it, and as that clock ticks down, you're playing a game that you're pitching, pitting your stamina against what your, your mind thinks is the correct route to the top. Correct, and you are also, on top of all of that, you're playing a game with yourself. If you try something and you fail at it, the question is, did I try hard enough or do I need to try something different? So because of all the sequences are obvious, there's multiple ways to try, even subtle multiple ways. Where the toes go, you see Tay here just hooking her toe around the corner for a little bit of balance. She's moving into this, this red taped hold is the zone, that's how we break ties. So she's trying to have you know, left to right lateral movement with almost no good footwork. So the balance point shifts and now she has to make a decision. Do I change my footwork or do I just need to try harder, move quicker? So in that four minutes, while you're solving the problem, you have a battle with yourself. Am I smart enough or am I making mistakes? Right, and we're down to a minute 30 here on the clock. Let's take a look here at the replay of where she let go of this. And just like finding the balance point here, do you see she's trying to get a space the side of the wall and just catching with her thumb. And then as she travels left to right, that right hand gets worse and worse and worse. So without that left side, this is kind of a compression. So imagine you're sort of picking up a square box mm -hmm. and keeping the tension on the sides with no handles to grab. That's basically what Taya's dealing with standing on this boulder. And rest is important too, Todd. So in four minutes, you want to you yeah. get as many tries as you can without getting exhausted, but you have to leave yourself enough time to climb the boulder. So she's really going to be fighting for this zone hold now because every opportunity for points is going to matter in this finals round. Well, she's under a minute left here. Let's see if she can get herself past that red line. Just got to find maybe a little different footwork and maybe that left hand. She just needs to be quicker to watch if she'll swap it over and try and make a squeezing motion. And she's got her left foot up this time, so a different idea. Just, it's a bit of a long span. Todd, the boulder problems are really hard. Yeah, so let's get I'm it straight right away. Right now. Yeah, that we're not expecting 
all of the climbers to top all of the boulders. We're not even expecting half of the climbers to top all of the boulders. Well, that's the Some point, the right? the athletes, yeah, we'll do one or two, maybe. Yeah, and you want to make them difficult. It's very, very challenging. So now, now what are these, they're doing it, they're cleaning up the, the holds on there, and mm -hmm. they'll bring the next athlete out to try to take on that face. Exactly, so the chalk build up, so we put chalk on our hands to take away some of the moisture, some of the sweat, but you don't want it to build up on the holds, you lose friction. So there's a subtle balance, the, you got volunteers, they get a good seat. Well, mm -hmm. not anymore, they're sitting in a lake, but they get, they get a front row seat, um, but we make them work. So we make them brush the holds and they'll brush in between tries as well. You'll see them kind of, you know, point and say, hey, you know, can you brush this hold for me? Can you brush that hold for me? And just like that, the clock runs down to zeros and the next two climbers come out. So it goes uh, quite quickly. Four minutes is not very no, long when you're trying to solve something like this. And you see them uh, trying to keep their shoes dry. There's a lot of water behind that wall as well. We got Chloe Kim there on the right and uh, Finn Battersby on the left. And as we saw, you know, some, some athletes just get right up the top instantly. Mm -hmm. And others take a little bit of time to, to figure out and get their footing. And as we saw there, there was so much water out in front here where people are sitting down. Just gives you an idea of the monsoonal flow that we had to endure about an hour ago here. Yeah, it was... Um, a really bad low point, I think, in front of the climbing wall as well that created a lake. And we thought we were going to be fine. The wall stayed dry, which was really critical. So that is allowing us to put this competition on, is that the holds on the wall stayed dry. Four minutes, Chloe Kim and Finn Battersby. And interesting, as you said, that some of them still need an extra few, like, what am I doing? Okay, and then boom, no time to waste on the first boulder. It's still fresh in their mind from the preview that they did uh, only about 15 minutes ago. Right. Well, good look at the start of the men's boulder where you need to hold that tension and then sort of coordinated monkey bar style swinging to get through there. None of those big blue holds are good enough. Chloe just moving through there very quickly. And it's interesting to see, you know, the, the contrast in styles between uh, the climbers. I mean, it's the person we had before had so much trouble getting to that point and she just seemed to have worked it out so much easier. Slightly different foot position, different body position, and Chloe Kim is gonna be our first top on boulder number one on the first try. So, Todd, first try, we call that a flash. Um, and you don't get extra points for it, but you're not losing those attempts is not counting against you. So one top in one try, that's how you want to start your day. Yeah, if you're behind in isolation, I mean, you hear those cheers. What does that do to you as an athlete that's coming out next, you know, and you hear someone cheer that quickly? There is definitely some of that gamesmanship you can play with yourself. Um, you might think that maybe that was for Finn. Mm -hmm. So you're not sure, but you know that the crowd is cheering in less than a minute. So something exciting happens, someone topped a boulder. You can choose to ignore it. You can choose to use it as that motivation to be like, boulders are getting top, I need to top them as well. They join each other, so they're isolated. After they do their problem, they go around to a separate isolation. So they're not with the clubs okay, who haven't so done it yet. Okay, so you don't know who's actually come back there and completed, mm -hmm. completed and the And then climb. they join each other again, and, and sometimes they talk about it, and sometimes they don't. Everybody's a little bit different in what they want to share. It's a good look at these two blue holds on the way to the one around the corner. Not good enough to slow the momentum down. That's why you sort of, we call that paddling through. The best hold on that section is the one around the corner. But that timing, the coordination, that's what's going to make this boulder difficult. But you saw that Solomon did it uh, very quickly. Yeah. So almost a minute and a half left here. Difficulty on that. But, you know, you would think that a climber would start to think, maybe this isn't the right route for me to take at this point. Mm -hmm. And that's what you judge. Well timed. So Finn there tried to stop on the two pinches, on the big blue pinches, and, and see if that was the way. So a little bit less momentum in his jump uh, and not quite enough to stick that either. So you do... You either have to stick to your guns mm -hmm. or make subtle changes. There's nothing worse than having tried the right thing first time and then moved on. And you can see the crowd sort of are in dismay sometimes, especially coaches watching an athlete give up on the right thing to do in favor of something weird that they had a slightly more success with. So the frustration comes through and you, yeah, you think and it how could much be does possible. That, how much does that play in, the frustration factor, where it kind of takes your mind away from where it should actually be? Depends how seasoned of a competitor you are. Good work there with more than enough time to top this boulder from Finn. The more seasoned you are, the less you get worried about it. Uh, but newer competitors, you know, or younger on the big kids circuit, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to get to them a little bit. Really good work there from Finn. 
So there we go. Perfect. Sticking with it till the yeah. end. I thought that's a really good example of, you know, not letting yourself get discouraged by the, the first failure attempts. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's baked into the whole sport. So we spend a lot of time landing on the mat. I got a, a look here, at, a really good look at these holes. It's Finn coming around the corner and making it work that time. Just controlling the momentum so his legs didn't swing back as far. And then the top of this bowl, they're not that hard. So the men got an easy intro. The Root Setters, which is the team that puts the problems up, it's, they're very well thought out, the order that they put them up in. So they gave the boys one that is going to take a few tries, might get in their head a little bit, make them a bit nervous, but they should all do this boulder. And it should be mentioned that they have to have full control when they get both their hands on the top. They can't just go up there and high five it and fall off. Correct, correct. They need to have full control. You'll sometimes see them turn around and look at the judge to get that confirmation. Um, there's, uh, there's some climbers who are really well known for grabbing the hold with one hand, fist bumping, switching hands, oh. fist bumping the crowd, but still haven't officially matched the top yet. Um, and it makes some, makes some coaches very nervous, of course. So I'm we get sure. a look at Tim Kang and Sophie Butendike putting their shoes on. But yes, full control and we'll, I mean, I, I don't like to see it, but it's good to, it's good excitement when somebody you know, is slipping while trying to match the top. So we're gonna see people get close. We should see a little bit of everything. The boulders here, I uh, walked through them with the root setters earlier. They're very exciting. We're gonna test a lot of different approaches to climbing here. Five, four, three, and upper body two, strength obviously one, is one. paramount in this, but I mean, just to have that stamina to be able to sit there and let your muscles shake it out and, and be able to hold on with full grip strength is incredible to me. Mm -hmm. And they climbed yesterday and they climbed this morning. Yeah. So they go through the whole process. Skin is an issue, so a lot of the holds tend to be brand new and it's been very humid here in Montreal. So they'll have thin fingertips. Interesting, I didn't even really think about that, but I guess, yeah, with this humidity, you're gonna... On the left, uh, grew up in the Bay Area and moved to Salt Lake City. That's where most of the US national team trains now. Moving quickly through this yeah. boulder. Sophie Butendike, a little more measured, but again, very easily to the zone hold. Yeah, some things just make more sense, I imagine, than they do to others. Yeah, and it, it fits your body type, or most climbers will have uh, preferential styles, things they're, they know they're very good at. You wait till we get into the slab tod, so the lower angle climbing mm -hmm. gives people fits. <laughs> this is, uh, I'm here for it. Yeah. I'm here for the fits. Really good stuff. So if you do die, a very young field, 21 years old. Um, I think Tim is one of the oldest at 23. So you know, on the women's side, the age goes up a little bit. We have some some World Cup veterans that we're going to see. Is it trending that way as it is with like you know all action sports at this point, where if, if you're not peaking by the time you're 17, you're you're on your way out. Yeah, there's uh, right now we have World Cup winners in their early 20s, and we've had some teenagers win World Cups this year, so pretty remarkable. And just a good look at the difference in style. Sophie Butendike just sinking that left side a little bit lower, and then just see the change in hands, just feeling things out, moving confidently, and then they're getting that balance before moving up the wall. So just being a little more cautious, knowing she doesn't have to make a desperate stab, being very measured moving through there. And it really is, it's a game of leverage, isn't it? Just to make sure that you have the leverage to like solidify yourself into your next move. Yeah, and it's the, a game of momentum as well, so. Yeah, no. you don't want to get stuck, do you? No, yeah. and that'll happen too. People climb into places where they're very comfortable, like stationary, but can't exit. Right. So you, uh, you know, sometimes you can climb yourself into a corner. Sometimes you can overdo the momentum. So on, we saw Finn a couple times blow himself past the corner instead of you know using his momentum just under the control. Babette Wa, the uh, Quebec champion in 2021, and Guy McNamee on your left, who is our uh, the golden ticket winner. So we ran a series of comps coast to coast uh, called the Tour de Bloc, which resurfaced uh, you know, a, an, an older competition three, series. Two, and the winner one, of each event in Victoria, five. so in Vancouver, Canada, Calgary, and Toronto, Ontario, and then in Halifax, Nova Scotia, the winner on the men's and women's side got a golden ticket through to this event. So they got their airfare paid, they got their hotel paid, they got some pocket money, uh, and then they won each of those competitions. So Guy McNamee is our golden ticket winner.
from Victoria. He's a BC-based climber, so he uh, won his way in. You see him skipping the first pinch. It's, uh, he's a springy climber, World Cup experience this year, first year on the national team. That, that as well. And you see they're just trying to go through the muscle memory of what happened. And, mm -hmm. So what, if someone wants to get into bouldering, just your average person, where, where do they go in to try to figure this out? There is a bouldering gym near you. Right. Wherever you live uh, in North America, nice <laughs> from the, uh, there will be a climbing gym. So look up climbing gyms, bouldering gyms in my area. Almost all of them will have some kind of introductory program. They'll rent you shoes. They'll walk you through the gym and show you how it works. And then you just have to commit to uh, losing a lot of skin in the first <laughs> few months and having really sore forearms and shoulders and really tight shoes. And then once you tip over that point, maybe you'll stick with it for life. Guy McNamee is going to top this bowler's second try. Pretty casual. Yeah, it's nice and clean all the way up to the top. I mean, I, it's inherent in human nature is to climb things from a very young age. So I think it's it's so fascinating to watch, and, and I do think it's embedded in in the human DNA is to scale and climb. Yeah, it's one of the fundamental movements, and we like to hang, and that's what we did as kids. We played yeah, on the monkey exactly. bars, and kids still play on the monkey bars. They climb up stuff, they jump off stuff, and you'll now see uh, little climbing walls in playgrounds. So new playgrounds will have sort of big, colorful climbing walls, you know, and it just gives your kids something to grab, and. There's lots of junior programs. So if you've got yeah. kids, young kids, uh, climbing is fantastic for young kids. Get them in at that, you know, eight, nine, 10 years old, and they're competing by 12 if, if it's something they agree with. So Babette has been competing, I think, since she was nine. Right. Um, and now at 20, that's a lot of experience packed into a 20-year-old, and that's why we're seeing younger World Cup athletes in the last 15 years, maybe the whole sport has shifted to kids coming in. I didn't start climbing until I was, um, you know, last year of university. So right. you know, now kids are finding it much, much, much earlier. Yeah, and by that time, your body was already, like, stiff, and, you know, it didn't work the way you would really optimally like, like it to work. And as we see her right here, just kind of looking up at that wall, do you see the frustration kind of coming out? I can see the body language. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll see across all the finalists in this field, you're going to see variants of, sort of emotional expression. So some climbers, stone cold. Some climbers will show both sides, uh, frustration and excitement, and some will only show one or the other. So some very focused, they'll show frustration, they'll top a boulder, they'll look mad still mm -hmm. because they fell, it all, fell off a few times. Uh, and some climbers show the swing, so they'll be ecstatic when they send it, they'll be mad when they don't. Um, and Everybody's a little bit different, and that's how do you want to compete? And what works for you? And sometimes it's okay to sit in that anger, and that's close. She's just not solving that uh, push balance, so push up and push down. So she's going to walk off with 30 seconds to go. Um, thinks that she's not going to have enough to get to the top. So that she might carry that to the next boulder. But I bet is, um, I mean, she's been competing for a long time. She might look frustrated on the mm -hmm. next one, but she dials in. Right. And it's it's so interesting to see some people able to unlock the route very, very quickly and make it just look effortless, and others struggle with, you know, trying to muscle up through something that, that totally is unnecessary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the climbing should look easy. Right. Uh, and that's what we try and get across when we do broadcast especially is it's definitely not. The angles of the wall don't come across on TV very well, and then all of the subtle adjustments between the angles of the holds and the footholds and sort of direction of travel. So when they make it look smooth, it's, that's how you make it look doable. Right. When you look like every move, you're fighting your own momentum or you're, you know, you're push-pulling the wrong way. The struggle is real for sure. Um, smooth is, is clean. Then we see Petra Klingler from Switzerland has been, I mean, you're talking about somebody with, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of, you know, 31, 32 top 10 finishes in the World Cup career. And she's a nice climber. Yeah, it's, it's fascinating. I mean, she's brushing down the holds here for herself. And I mean, there's that, that age-old uh, racing trope that's slower is faster. Mm -hmm. And I can see that really kind of showing itself here as well, to take your time, be patient, make sure that you're solid in your holds. Yeah, rushing through things, especially when you, the clock starts to run down, lots of mistakes so the right thing to do when the clock is running out is to take a breath mm -hmm. and slow down and Petra very measured she's not going to be fussed by the squeeze of these holds 
And she's um, basically coming back into shape. She's been injured. So she re-emerged on the World Cup circuit this year and has been you know, sort of testing the boundaries of her strength. So she's uh, climbed this. The World Cup season just finished for bouldering. Uh, and then she came here. She's been you know, to Canada a couple times to compete before and never done this comp. And I keep hearing about it. So for her, she's still testing out her fitness and telling me she's looking pretty good. Yeah, I mean, this is incredible right here. Just how she conquered that. It seems once you get to that point, it's just really easy. It's basically just a muscle up into uh, your double hold at the end. Strong match before celebration. That's what we like to see. That and what Babette was having problems with was that the space between you know the pushing underneath you know on that last diagonal red hold. Uh, it just wasn't fitting her mental picture of what needed to get done there. Uh, Lucas, I'm I would have lost money. <laughs> Strip on the mat there. I would have lost money on him not doing this boulder first try. Uh, he's a very dynamic climber. Still very young. And it's just uh, you got not this, you got quite this. getting the pieces put together. You keep seeing him return to that brush there as well. But let's look right here as where she made this move where it was essentially in the bag for her. Yeah, I, I think as soon as this, that established on that undercling, um, now she's a 100% solid. And the finish hold on this hold, this boulder is very good. Not all the boulders have good finish holds, so sometimes we like to make the climbers really work to, to finish. Mm -hmm. um, all on, the work Lucas. on that boulder is done to get to the side, to the arena. Uh, and once you're grabbing the finish hold, we'll give it to you. Now, when the judges are, are really paying attention to things here, what are, they, what are they noting? Like, what's the biggest thing that stands out to a judge? The judges have to pay attention to how they start the boulder, so they have to get established, so two, a limb on each piece of tape. So um, if you sort of mistouch one of the footholds, you'll get called off, uh, and then they're looking at whether or not they control that zone hold. So the zone, you can't just touch. You need to go with this. Lots of time. So you watch here, he's got to grab that, and then he has to make a movement. So as long as you make a climbing related movement, they'll give you possession of the zone hold, and then they're watching very carefully for control on the top. So they're got here, these guys yes. tablet in hand, and then bam, that's control. That's what they're looking for on every single boulder. So it's cool to see, you know, a bit of that little bit of extra swing in the legs can throw you off of your positioning. Mm -hmm. And then this, although these holds are very small at the top of this, the footwork is very good. You see he's got his right heel tucked in, locked in. And for these climbers, those crimps are pretty good size. It's probably about three quarters of the first pad of your finger. And for them, that's good enough on that angle. Yeah, that, that the little holes there, the tiny little ones. You go and you put your fingers on those and you're like, this, this doesn't even make sense to a normal human being. Yeah, the, the ability to grab small things and wide things, so big, wide pinches, those are sort of stretching your imagination of what strength looks like to you, you know, the average person who's picking up the sport for the first time. Now, are people actually like exercising their, you know, hands specifically as far as like strength training in their hands? What, how would you go about doing that? There are tools. Every gym is going to have um, essentially a picture of pull-up bar, mm -hmm. but made of wood with edges and pockets of descending width. Okay. So all the way down to you know half a millimeter. Um, so now we're training on those things, and then there's lots of tools in and around the gym, so you can pick up weights using blocks that you pinch. Um, there's round balls to hang from to test that, how big your open hand strength is. So there's lots and lots and lots of training tools. Uh, the campus board has existed for a, a long time, which is just thin metal, or thin wooden rungs, you know, up, and you just, no feet at all, and it's just, pulling through on very small edges, and that's the finger training. Alana Yip here on the right, just super casual. Yeah, look at that. No Done. problem for Alana. A lot of time left on the clock, full control. Uh, and they would have thought that maybe it was tricky to get across when they were previewing at the beginning, where they would have talked about, ah, is this gonna be difficult? Is this gonna be hard? And then as soon as she pulled on, you could just see almost the relaxation of, oh, I'm just gonna make no mistakes and run through this boulder. Charles Barron having Issues. And you see him trying to go now. Completely different style. He slowed down. Stopped on that second blue hold. I don't know that's just for show. 
So Charles Barron is working the crowd up. A little bat hang here. Fully unnecessary, and yet the crowd is eating that up. So that's him. Little showmanship. I so basically at, at that point, he knows that he's got it. And in the back. Yeah, it's, it's all for the crowd. Yeah, he did it in the semifinal too. He got to the second last hole, turned around, pointed to the crowd, asked them to give him a little, little love before he finished the boulder. So that's cool. Charles Barron, a great character. Coming out of the U.S. Just on the U.S. national team for the first time this year. Uh, you know, 20th at a World Cup, which is excellent. That's a semifinal in a World Cup. He's... Um, See Atlanta there, just showing that easy casual swing means everything's in control. And a bat hang from Charles Barron, adding a little showmanship stamp to the end of Boulder number one. And just like that, Todd, we're done. Boulder. On the right. women's side, Taya Wolf unable to get a top or a zone. So you see on her first Boulder, Five, no results. Four, so three, she needs to regather two, herself. That was one, maybe quote one. unquote the easy Boulder. So now we're getting into some harder, steeper stuff. She's going to need to dial it up if she wants to stay in the running. Uh, the top four women all did that boulder first try, so they're all one up right now. All right, here we go, straight up into it. Solomon on the delicate climbing slab on the right, and the complete opposite. Taya Wolf getting inside out in the monkey bars, and she's going to go feet first. That is really, I didn't see this when I read through the sequences. This is really cool stuff. Allez, come on, so. Moving just had to be come so on, careful. Come on, is, it, is it easier? Like sometimes, oh. like that, you're actually allowing your upper come body to rest when you're hanging upside down like that. Allez, uh, I mean, it goes wrong a lot. So you know, pulling in and out of it, you're gonna tire your core Allez. out a little bit. Um, the front of your shins aren't very strong, Allez, so yeah. hanging by your toes is hard on your hips. Boulders aren't usually come long on, enough fight, to need to fight, rest fight, your fingers at all. So that is the way this one is designed. So they'll turn around and it makes it easier for them to move through it. Taya just getting that, just perching carefully, making no mistakes this time. Nice topping out first try. So you could go through that. We might see someone uh, campus through that, so they'll just yank off those two pockets. Um, but that's the slow and careful way is to go feet first. Um, but it's quite hard to essentially do an upside down sit up into your own toes. Absolutely. Yeah, so you're gonna touch your own toes upside down while hanging. Um, and then, then again, it's easy. not over yet either. No. So then you have to have a lot more core strength to get you through the rest of it as well. Exactly. Solomon here you saw, if you were watching the right side of the screen, just had a sudden slip. And that's what boulders like this are like. Oof. So there are, there's no help. So the big triangles, those big gray triangles, we call them volumes. There's friction on them. So that's the, the walls are textured. So it's like a coarse sandpaper. Right. So it gives them a little bit of purchase, but it's very low angle. So the higher you get up on your toes, the more likely you are to slip. So you want to relax. It's counterintuitive. You want to drop your heels down, get as much shoe rubber on the hold as possible. But this is very delicate, slow, careful climbing. And you were saying to me yesterday that the shoes that they wear, depending on what surface they're climbing and what angle, they'll oftentimes go to a softer shoe or a stiffer shoe. Oh. Yes, they will. Uh, they'll they'll bring a couple pairs with them, and when they previewed the boulders earlier, they'll they'll note which maybe there's a boulder where they want something with a bit of a stiffer edge, so they can press down. Or a softer shoe for a boulder like this, where you want to be able to press into everything. So almost getting to the top, but we go back over to a replay here. This was incredible. Uh, Taya Wolf just being casual, and then after not getting the first one, just so, I mean, even the last three moves, she was more careful than she needed to be. A couple of heel hooks that didn't need to be there, but she was not about to drop another top. Now, is he gonna go for the same move, try to hook that toe into that very tiny little space right there? I think so, the only choice here, that right foot hold, it's awful, it's round, and as you, yeah, you, the more weight you get on it, the better it is. So the more his weight is to the left, He's not able to really get that established amount of friction. So he's, he's moving right now, though. Yeah. It looks like much more hustle here. Almost 30 seconds on the clock. He's just trying to give himself. And oh. When you go quickly on a climb like this, that's when the mistakes happen. But with 30 seconds, he definitely had to give it one more try. And Solomon is going to walk away from boulder number two. It looked as though he had top. it. I mean, he virtually had it. And here, it's a, a better look here at how bad the footwork is. And as soon as he gets up in his toes, 
You just lose friction and balance. It's less than vertical, but only just. Yeah. He's going to walk away. And they, uh, if you don't climb a boulder that's not your style, it's hard to be really mad. Of course sure. they want to top them all, but finalists come in knowing the odds of them getting four out of four are very slim. So you can win a World Cup with one or two tops. They're not expecting to top them all. They're expecting to get turned away by one or two boulders. And that's not the point, right? The, the course setters, the boulder setters, are they do not want everyone to get to the top. That is not the point of this. No, they want a few people to get to a top. They want all the boulders to get done. They don't all have to get done by the, the same people. Correct. Um, generally, it's nice to see your winner get four tops, but they're essentially creating the landscape and then making choices based on how well they know the athletes. They watch the qualifier, they watch the semifinal, and they make adjustments back to these boulders. This boulder, these finals got put up on Wednesday. So they set these on Wednesday, and now I think there's probably some blood. Yeah, that uh, looks like the blood kit, so he's got a little spray, <laughs> and then he'll spray it down with the uh, isopropyl, and then brush it in, and then re-chalk it. So one of the common technicals, especially in a final, in a humid outdoor setting, uh, somebody split a tip, so there's bleeding out of his tip, and he's left some blood on the hold. I'm just but hearing, I'm just hearing now that Chloe Kim is coming back out because her previous top. They're giving her three minutes on the clock because her previous top was not legal according to the judges. Interesting. So they're going to bring her back out, okay. and we're going to have her go through this once again. So that's that would be a bummer to hear that because it didn't really look like she had very much trouble getting to the top of that. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, it's Taya. Oh, it's Taya was yeah, okay. And I'll tell you, when I saw the replay, I, I didn't say it at the time, but it was as we were talking about. So she grabbed it with her right hand and slapped it a bunch of times. So when you slap the hold, you're not showing, although you're obviously in control, the rule is two hands control. So because she was popping on her hand, bam, 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 the judge is like, that is not a top. Or somebody appealed, maybe not sure. Interesting. But she didn't have a huge amount of issue uh, with the boulder, so five, I think four, three, she should be two, fine. One. It's still, though, that is just... It's frustrating. It's a kick in the butt. Yeah, it is. You're sitting back there, you're like, all right, boulder number two, boom, out of the way, I'm back in this thing, and someone taps you on the shoulder and says, Atea, please, come with us, you need to do boulder two again. That, oh, man. Well, let's see if she goes inverted here once again. Looks Atea. like she may take like she the will. same route. Come on, yeah. come on. Adi, adi. Just gotta be... You can't Good. be too cavalier with knowing you've already done it once before. Yeah. You still got to dial back in the focus. And nice and relax. Looks like she has. No problem here. I don't have that hip mobility anymore, Todd. I can't do that. I've never had it, so um, it never, <laughs> never, it was never there. Don't cry to me. <laughs> <laughs> so be very careful. And see, she is climbing so. <gasps> oh, oh, Taya. So maybe. Now a little frustration will set in. I only have three minutes because she spent two of them, or one of them on her first try. Two minutes now. And she was so, so careful the first time through those little blue crimps. This angle of that wall is about 35 degrees, Todd. It's, I mean, this one's really hard to get. Even I was talking with Cassandra, our on the floor reporter, and when you're standing 15 feet back, she's like, okay. And then you walk up to the yeah, wall. Yeah, it's well over vert, you mm -hmm. know? When you turn around and look up, and the holds are farther apart than they look because the perspective, there, there's depth. So the, it is much more difficult than it looks. And those little crimps on that angle, um, she just slipped a little there and dropped one. She's going to let the clock wind down. This is really hard on your gut. Is oh, yeah. Recovering enough while just letting time, which is a precious, precious resource, drift away. Yeah. Yeah. Time, like that resting is so crucial, but at the same time, that clock is just working against nice. you the entire time. Yeah, it's relentless. All right, yeah, Teowulf, what have you got? Good. Your finger hold is insane. Come on. Oh, very careful again. It seems like she has you this part it. of the climb. Yeah, dialed in. Easy. Nice. Why? A better look at the angle. Oh, oh. Yeah, she, now she's there's definitely fatigue. That's you saw her sagging away from the wall. She lost some of the tightness. 
Let's take a look back and see where that problem, the discrepancy, happened here. So their control, boom, boom, boom. So she all she never... had to do was hold her hand on it. That's it. Man, your judges are gnarlier than snowboard judges. Yeah, we dig in. There is, uh, there's no room, and it is something. And it's funny because we talked about it right at the top of the show. And coaches, and they will drill it into their athletes, match the hold, show control, do then a backflip after, yeah, play cares? around yeah. after the fact. So. The argument that climbing fights with a little bit is clearly she had control enough to swing around and, yes. and bang the hold. But we are very, very, very rote definition by the rule book, which is two hands in control. So one hand in control, change the game, no problem. But we, uh, we haven't done that just yet. Now, is there, would she be able to actually go and appeal that? No. No, it, it's, she'll look back and go, ah, you were right. I definitely didn't put two hands on that for any length of time. Oh, Kim may be dealing with the light sprain there. She's just trying to force her shoe over the tape. Climbing shoes are so tight that any extra volume uh, is very difficult to deal with. So she's just going to work that well, heel in there. I mean, it's basically like a second rubber skin for your foot, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah, Five, we're trying four, to compress your foot three, down to get as much two, power over the big toe one, as possible. Uh, we're still having that flexibility through the mid. Sounds blistery. Uh, blistery, callousy. <laughs> um, definitely fish. crampy. Yep. Uh, but very sticky rubber. The technology in climbing shoes is just fantastic these days. All right, so the clock has started here. Chloe Kim over to the left of your screen, already on the move. One of the shorter climbers and younger, 16 years old, but was your golden ticket winner in Victoria. So she drove up from Seattle to Victoria to win her way into the Jackalope. Look at this, same, same. basic technique. Come on, Ben. Now, is that obvious to you that that would be how you would solve that problem? I solved that like I would have climbed it, and I would have just kept it. So I would have had those pockets and just did a, or just pulled up and grabbed. Okay. Um, but it is steeper, and it's a higher risk move. Chloe, no mistakes through the crimps, and that's control. So they would have discussed it, and as soon as I saw the first climber, and as soon as I saw Taya put her feet up, I went, oh, obviously. Right. Right. It's just I can't. I don't. I don't do that. I would never try and touch my own toes, I'm, I'm like, my hamstrings can't handle it, so See, I would have just, I would have muscled it out. You know, I would think as a climber, you would want to be as flexible as possible, yeah. but I'm glad to hear that your body also doesn't work like you want it to either. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, although you do want to be as flexible Whoa. and as mobile as possible, time happens for all of us. And Finn, just not getting through the opening. Chloe and moving. Carefully through here, no problems. And then that's a solid match. So Finn is going to let the clock wind down a little bit. And when you say let the clock wind down, he's basically just resting, mm -hmm. trying to get some of that power back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's, uh, it, it, he's probably doing a little thinking. But Paramount is resting. Just even though this is not a taxing boulder, he's got to bring his heart rate down a little bit. He's got to relax. He can't come up jittery on a boulder like this. You just your footwork cannot handle it. So as we see, you know, another unique approach. And that big rounded off hold, the next hold that he's going for, just seems so awkward to try to keep attention and grip on. Mm -hmm. And he's gonna probably do the same probably that right hand will put his palm down Whoa. Yeah, that coordination but as you as you push down you're sort of opening your shoulders a little bit and that makes it right for you to tip off so that the balance point from too close to the wall to too far away from the wall is only a degree or two before you you're off so you feel you saw him when he first pulls on and he's sitting with his foothold on I can stay here all day but as soon as you have to put movement into the picture left to right or front to back then this kind of problem becomes just very, very, very tricky. And I guess for a little support, you know, you, you talk about it really is about tension, keeping that tension of your body to keep you locked into these moves. And I think that's that to me too is, is something that I didn't realize that that really is the secret is keeping your body locked with that tension on there. Mm -hmm. And it, the tension runs you know, from toe to fingertip yeah. through your core. So climbers are very, very strong in their core for those reasons. Whoa. 
Yes, that's much better. Oh, oh he he's right it. there. He rushed it. He needed to rush it, but not that much. Oh, 15 seconds. Go, 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 go. I love that he's going to try it one more time. Come on. Every top matters, Todd. That's why they're going to throw themselves at this. Five seconds. Wow. Come think on. That's enough. Three, two. Oh. 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 Almost had it, though. Yeah. I love Almost a buzzer beater, it. but it stresses me out. <laughs> So definitely going for it right there. Trying to make something happen in the dying seconds. Not quite. That right foot is, there's nothing to it. There's nothing to it. And like you said earlier, it's very humid outside. We've had that rain this afternoon. It's been very warm. So humidity levels are up, which just makes everything just less tacky. Mm -hmm. And it's something that's easy to get frustrated by. So it's easy to be back in isolation. Ah, well, it's humid. But it's humid for everyone. Right. So if someone topped the boulder and you didn't, you don't get to play the weather card anymore. So you could all be frustrated by a boulder that became very difficult because of the weather. But you're on your own if you're on your own. So you have to walk through that. I mean, some climbers will make, they'll defend themselves. Mm -hmm. You kind of have to. Uh, and some will dig in and say, man, I need to climb better. You know, there's, a, there's lots of internal you know, psychological skills that are coming into competition climbing that are really, because you're on your own. You sure. don't have your coach in your ear. They can't communicate with each other. So you really ready? have to talk yourself back out of the dark Five, place. Four, and, three, and not everyone's good two, at that. So one, sports psychology one. is really coming into to bouldering in the last few years because we're realizing that it is quite difficult to manage those internal expectations well, in they, four minutes. Yeah, and they say, you know, it's on, all TV. of the sports that we do and we love to do that take massive on, amounts man. of adrenaline, but incredible amounts of concentration. It's 90% mental. Mm -hmm. You've got to will yourself to do some things that you, you know, that little voice Whoa. in the back of your head is telling you is not possible at all. Different approach here from Sophie Butendijk. So she's electing not to do that in, and she oh, changed her mind. So she tries to like, maybe it's A <laughs> and then immediately B because <laughs> this is, oh. it's hard. So she is going to go to figure Look nine. That. That this is, is insane. Oh. What the I heck? can't tell you the last time I saw that in the climbing competition. That is, we'll get to it. We'll show that in a replay. We'll walk it through. It's, it's too complex to talk about now, but that's Sophie Butendijk pulling out an ice climbing maneuver. Rarely seen in sport climbing and even rarer in bouldering. And you're going to want to make sure you stay on the boulder after that. So, unreal. Uh, Timothy yeah, Kang. She's, she's struggling right now. Mm -hmm. She's trying to stay with it. She made all that progress. Um, strong fingers. Tim a little taller. And able to make that move from lower down. Wow. Sophie Butendijk topping that out. That was fantastic. Timmy Kang. Right. She'll be out. Pleased with herself, I think, for that set of decisions. So this here. So when you're trying to look for leverage, you hook your arm over your, or your leg over your arm, and then you use that for leverage to pull up with the other hand. That makes absolutely zero sense mm -hmm. to me. It's, but uh, it works, It apparently. works. So you can either go uh, right arm over right, right foot over right arm, or right foot over left arm. So are they same or different? One's a figure four, one's a figure nine. It gets used a lot in ice climbing where there's not a lot of good footwork. Mm -hmm. So there, uh, campus, so she's just, there's no one, there's no feet that's campusing. Uh, you can be strong in campus powerfully, you can do that toe hook, and then she thought, you know what? This is in the book, I'm gonna go create my own leverage, and it worked beautifully. And I suspect she'll be the only one that does it, but I've been wrong before. I mean, it's just completely different styles here to conquering these problems. Which I think is so oh, cool. Oh, so close. Just you unable to hold that left side falling away from the so wall. So you want to get your hand on that and create that tension with your body so you can bring that other hand in mm -hmm. and finish the top, finish the climb and top it. Yeah, and you're trying to create that opposition in a straight line. So anytime your foot is below your hand, um, you essentially create a hinge. Right. So when you're moving across that hinge, the whole left side of your body wants to open up on that those two points, your right hand and your right foot. So the trick is, again, go back to your core, uh, slow down the movement so you you stick that finish hold 
You stick everything in your core, you see his left leg flail out. If he can slowly bring it back to the wall, he'll have a match. So you hear boom, watch the left side, boom. Perfect control. There we go. Top of Timmy. Right down in the last 40 seconds. Psyched about that. So that's gonna... Good job! Two tops in two. Good start for Tim Kang. Super careful. And this was the move here where he creates the tension. This is insane to me. That there, yeah. Just got it. Small adjustments. When you look at the temp before that to this one, uh, you probably didn't see anything that he did differently. And he just changed a little bit of the angle. He stood a little taller, squeezed a little harder. That left leg didn't come up as high. So those micro adjustments are what we're looking for um, as athletes making our own internal decisions and then as coaches trying to get people to understand movement. You're looking for, when you're a beginner, it's big things. Try not to miss the foothold, try not to slip. When you get to this level, um, the, the decisions and the subtle changes are so slight that even Good climbers don't notice what's changed between attempt one and attempt three. Guy McNamee and Babette Trois back out, so Babette can uh, regroup from boulder number one. Guy McNamee can continue the success. And when they come out and they preview these boulders in the beginning, are is there... Is it common for the competitors, you see them all working together to work it out, but do some of them hold the cards really close to their chest, you know, and not really show, maybe they figured it out in their head, but they're like, I don't know, maybe I, I don't know. It's a little bit of both, Todd. The, Five, four, it's a three, very collaborative two, sport. So one, at, one. at its absolute base culture, climbing is you against the problem outside, you against the root, you against the problem in competition. There's things to be won, of course, so now you have to layer in competition. So. The, the real sentiment that runs through climbing is, I want to have a better day than everyone else's better day. I don't want, some, I don't want to win because someone else failed a bunch. Mm -hmm. So when they're previewing, they share a lot of information. What you might get is somebody that's, you know, that's just the straight up power method. And Babs loves to bend her arms. She's all about squeezing. So she would have, maybe they would have been talking about the toe hooks. She's like, I'm not going to do the toe hooks. So she might have said, I'm just going to campus, or she might not. So they're never going to sell bad information out, but they might not always talk about what they're going to do. And in international comps, if it's even closer to the chest, bad bet, no mistakes. Boom, problem two, done, good work. So yeah, it's a, it's a balance. We, uh, we collaborate because that's how we are. You collaborate with your teammates on the World Cup stage a lot. And then here, the Canadians and the Americans, you know, we've been competing with and against each other for quite a long time. They, a lot of them will know each other. It'll be a chit chat. Gee, what are you gonna do here? Right. Well, I don't know, Todd. I'm thinking about doing this. Well, this is a critical point here in Gee's ascent. A great look at what that right foot. And this is the best hold. This is the best hold on the entire problem. So he's gonna match that. Oh. So the precision there. So this is interesting. So he's gonna come down low and he's gonna trust that right foot on a step up. So this is a totally different way to approach control the momentum from Guy, and he's just gonna, he's so strong in tension, in slow movement, but he's gonna, Look at gonna that. end up in the right place, but that right, oh, the right foot gave up. So a little bit of a roundabout way to essentially the same position. I thought he was gonna stay to the right and go straight up, but he ended up kind of drifting left, so. But he is very, very good as a slow moving climber, and the, the, it's based from when Guy and his brother, as a twin brother, when Guy and his brother were young, they started climbing at a young age, they were both scared of falling. So when they started climbing roots, so on ropes, mm -hmm. they didn't want to fall. And they moved very slowly for that reason. They were scared of heights. And it made them very, very strong. Yeah, meticulous, and it doesn't look like there's any unintentional movements going on anywhere. Right, stop, 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 he stop, might be stop, the stop. strongest sort of closed compression climber in Canada right now. When asked to, when you can't be dynamic, and you have to move slowly and just do those more isometric type of movements, Guy might be the strongest in the game right now in Canada, and it's been born out of fear of falling. Well, no one likes to fall. <laughs> You're right about that. So you see there, he's got the zone. 
That's crazy right there because that little hold is basically the size of a walnut mm -hmm. or smaller. Actually. Cheerio, we call them Cheerios. Yes, yeah. this is a Cheerio. And that dynamic foot swap, it's, uh, it's high risk, but that's something they're so good at. Now he's trying to create tension on his body so that he can wedge himself up into the final topping of this. Yeah. Oh! oh. There, I surprised that he decided to go. That left hand came off. But that was uncharacteristic for how he set up for that move. And maybe, maybe he was slipping. They start falling on slab before you and I will see that they're falling. Mm -hmm. So they know whether they're, you know, an act of desperation means that something's gone wrong before we've recognized it. Uh, that to me looked like a bit of an act of desperation. And now Guy uh, trying to go quickly and not able to. So he's going to walk away. 20 seconds left on the clock. With one, only the zone on Boulder 2. Tim Kang so far looking good. So Solomon and Finn and Guy well, all dude, unable to get a top. Lucas and Petra. Yeah. So they try to remember, so they're just, just all excited. I'm running over to, please tell me which boulder I'm going to. Back over here. Yeah. Uh, Petra, yeah, I would um, put a significant sum of money on. We'll do this, prob this boulder no problem. And uh, with the slab, no bets, please. I'm not going to make a call on Lucas's success or failure. One thing about Petra, I mentioned it in passing. You might not have caught it. She climbs. She's an ice climber as well, a competitive yeah, ice ready? climber. Um, so I think she might be the only Five, four, World three, Cup level competitor two, to one, be both five, a Boulder minutes. World Champion and an ice world champion. Interesting, two completely different styles with different equipment. Mm -hmm. And she loves them both. She absolutely adores ice climbing. Oh, Grew up in Switzerland in the mountains and it was just something they did on the weekend as a family. Yeah, you know, go for an ice climb. <laughs> as you do, <laughs> as you do. Oh, good look at that. So she's gonna go. Whoa. Feet first, but Come not on. through. Interesting. Come so on, for her, that's more Come careful than that pull Adi. through move. And she's just gonna Come never on, stop moving those feet. Love it. Absolutely love it. Lucas, Come meanwhile, on. don't sleep on that on your right. This boulder could be over as with a top or a slip on. in a half a second. Just trying to Come find on, purchase. That you're looking at options. It. It's steep in there, right? She's yeah. working hard. The Come muscles on, are moving. That's not casual at all. Lucas, not enough. And to get to that point where, you know, you're almost to the top. You can see victory is right there. There it is. There we go. That is what we're talking about. Petra, solid top on boulder number two. It's going to keep her. Love that. At it here yeah. in the final she, moments. A good look at how small these crimps are, and just she made a few decisions. Which one's better? Which one do I want to use? And then even there, you see a little bit of relief. So that, that'll keep her in the running with Sophie and Chloe. Keep her just on top. When we have ties, uh, which is pretty rare to tie your way through a final, we do go back to the semifinal result. So Petra will sit at the top of the leaderboard based on her being ahead of Sophie, everyone except Alana um, from the semifinal. So that's why she'll sit at the top of the leaderboard. And now uh, we should see some separation come through over the next couple of boulders. So Lucas Uchida almost to the top here. We saw him come off right around this section. Oh. It's now what's his technique right there? He's trying to kind of lunge himself into the last move. Yeah, he's very, very good at controlling momentum as a climber. So he's trying to get enough push off that left side and right foot to get over to the finish hold and then just tighten all his muscles to stop the movement. But you watch, just watch the right foot. That's the only thing you need to look at. And as soon as he waits it, it lets go. I gotcha. So if that foot sticks, he's in and he's locked in. But the, the love-hate relationship with this kind of climbing is that sometimes the harder you push, the higher the risk is. It just feels like ball bearings from nowhere. So they, they look surprised because they are. 
I didn't think I was going to fall there. Now with only just under a minute to go, time to be a little more careful. The same, probably the same approach. Mm. And even there, so it didn't, something slipped. No recovery, 40 seconds to go. Lucas, this problem is so, it climbs slowly, so it eats time on the way, and then you end up spending less time on the mat because you're still trying to get, you know, four attempts in on it. So 29 seconds, does he have enough on the clock to actually finish this off? He's got to rush to to the to the zone and the crimp, and then take one breath, and he does have he will have enough time, but he can't think about it for too long. Keep an eye on the bottom right of your screen and the right foot, Lucas Uchida. Not enough. So a little frustrated. Thank you. And he's gonna walk over. We're pushing it to the very end of that he's attempt. And he won't know, really, that the only person that's done this boulder is Tim Kang. Um, the crowd have been fairly quiet, but they've been that's cheering right. for the women. So he's uh, probably frustrated he didn't do that boulder, but he's not out of the running yet. Our last two on boulder number two, Charles Barron from the US and Alana Yip from BC, Canada. 14th at the Olympics. Climbing made its debut at the Olympics in Tokyo. Um, this discipline, plus lead, plus speed are the three climbing disciplines. Alana Yip was one of the Canadians on that team. 14th place, an excellent finish at the first Olympic trial. And then uh, Sean McCall, the most decorated Canadian climber, multiple world champion, injured, unfortunately, at the moment. Got hurt on the World Cup circuit earlier this year and is rehabbing a, a shoulder dislocation so he's uh, around, but not climbing. Uh, otherwise, I think we would have seen him here as well. You know, and climbing, you know, being one of those debut sports in Tokyo, we look forward to Paris, to, to, like to having the off. real showing. I feel mm. like the, the uh, last Olympics that like happened it. was kind of a eh, Olympics. Mm -hmm. This next one, I feel, now that we've gotten right, through uh, this whole COVID thing and we're coming out the other side of it, I'm really Four, hoping for a great three, showing, you know, two, in bouldering. One in skateboarding, in, in all of these kind of alternative sports, so the world can really see them showcase the way they, they need to be. Yeah, and, and climbing especially oh, suffered from combining the disciplines that normally people don't do wow. all of. So speed climbers specialize, lead climbers specialize, boulders specialize, and at the Olympics it was one medal for three events. Nice, Atlanta. Atlanta going inside out, nice. call that a rose move. And he's gonna go, yeah, toes up. Oh, wow. So we ended up with um, an interesting spread of some pretty good Come speed on, climbers on. and some pretty good boulders and some pretty good yes. lead climbers mixed together, all taking on one or two disciplines that they're not very good at. In, to uh, in Paris, you'll have lead and bouldering together, much more common, and speed is separated out as specialists. So look, you see here, Charles Barron, comfortable enough Come to go on, no hands. Now. Right. Um, and now the yeah, business starts. The sun has come hard, on the wall, hard. which will change the game again. I mean, we have run the gamut on. here with weather. Yes, we definitely but look have. at this right here. <gasps> oh, oh, too oh. casual. Wow. Too oh. casual, Charles Barron. Almost dragged his face down that hole no. as well. Alana's being a little indecisive with which order to take these crimps in. But ultimately, no problem. Yes, psyched. Yeah, the sun's gonna warm the holds up, and that's gonna, you know, it's gonna change a little bit of the friction content. Um, I'm, it's, it's hard to tell where we are, whether the same humidity we're feeling in the booth is what they're getting out there. But it'll get it hotter as the sun heats up all the water on the ground. That's Atlanta, in yep. The inverted approach there halfway through is just incredible. Uh, the amount of control that's being displayed. So we've got uh, almost coming up on two minutes on the clock here. Charles Barron looking to get himself in that position. You saw how casual, how cavalier he was on that last attempt. Oh, and this Ooh. is... Uh, there might be nothing worse than dropping the top of a boulder and then not getting back there. So the move that you thought, of course I can do that move, I just did it. Uh, you maybe lose a little bit of focus and now he's, more than anything, he's lost time. 
So he's going to lose another 40 or 50 seconds in that slip recovery. You see him there brushing now, taking a minute. You don't want to have any chalk or sort of anything, any particles are going to make that go from friction to ball bearings. So he's going to be very careful, clean his shoes. And um, yeah, not to mention these guys are also sweating profusely while they're doing this. So you're actually creating your own, uh, your own form of slipperiness on all of these holds. Yeah, the moisture content is uh, being aided by you, and the chalk really helps with that. But it can be too much, so you have to be a little careful. If you overdo it, you add, uh, you know, uh, just a slippery layer. So and that's better from Charles. He's in a better position now to wedge himself up there. Yeah. So that's more casual. You see the left side, same as Tim, and then bringing it in, no mistakes. Charles Barron, only the second person to top Boulder number. Two. So that puts Charles and Timmy at the top of the leaderboard based on excellent slab climbing. Yi, Solomon, Finn, and Lucas all bumped down to zones. So this is what not to do, I believe. Tries to screw his foot in there. Oh, the, sorry, that was I was uh, looking at the sun and trying to remember which attempt that was going to be. But yeah, he takes a little more time, bends his toes in. Gets it done. Didn't show control. You're called back because she didn't show control. Have to try it again and was unable to get back up there. So she'll be dealing with some internal frustrations. She still thinks she should have had a top in the bag, but needs to shake it off and move on. All right, so here we go. The clock is now running. This is the beginning of the third round, third boulder. And there you see very carefully, making sure she's got two hands on the start. This is going to be a coordination jump for the women on the right and then a, a powerful tension boulder from the men on the left. A similar movement. Root setters like to do this kind of thing as well. So same holds as on the women's second boulder is on the men's third boulder, just a little bit smaller. So we're going to force the men to do sort of a bit of an inside out twist as well. And look at this. Good, really good coordination. That left foot up high, not easy to do. And Taya is going to fight her way through the left to right coordination jump. So all about trying to get your positioning wedged in there. And this looks like, you know, over on the right-hand side of your screen, a full leap of faith here to get positioning. There, yeah, you see it's a one, two. She's going to go right hand, left hand, right hand again. So it's a, a leap of faith, left, right, left. <laughs> it's not... Uh, if, there's lots of easy ways to dyno, to move dynamically, two hands to two hands, uh, pretty straightforward. But this is a North American Cup Series level final. So we're gonna make them travel left to right, paddling their way across until they get to that compression at the end. So a big jump, and then a lot of subtle movement here to stay on top of this boulder. Wicked stuff, Taya Wolf solved in three. So that big wind up to get her into that position. And then getting just enough to not go drifting by. So making oh, oh. the heel slipped. Mm. Vertical heel hook's always a bit tricky. You're pulling in, but you have nothing to rest the bottom on. And then you see the side of the wall. We use the erect quite a lot, but there's, um, there's no holds on it, so it's just flat friction. And she's eyeing up a difficult last move. This boulder's not going to get given away too easily. Still lots of work to do. Solomon the same is finding that the move after the zone is 100% difficult. This will just sap you a little bit. Everything's here for a reason. There's no throwaway moves. There's no throwaway holds in a boulder final. Everything has a purpose. This is a different approach. He's going to get away from the arete, shorten the distance between the last hold and where she is now. So she's already gotten the zone there. Yeah, and she is, if she can keep the heel. Oh, look at the muscle, making sure, sure that she makes that contact. Mm -hmm. Almost a sassy little grin over her shoulder. I have control of the top of this boulder. All right, it's really unfortunate that call that was made by the, the judging committee about that second problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, she would have been in really good position right now. Yeah, she would have been still in the fight. There's the finger strength. Yeah. Now, maybe just running out of a little bit of gas on that 
The push drive. Time goes quickly. We're down to 30 seconds. He's probably going to walk away. He's going to call it right there. Yeah. So a zone, which is helpful, but we're hunting tops, and he will, I think, know that he might be taking himself farther away from a podium. Itea. This right heel hook is key to making a controlled finish. I uh, got it this time. And you see the sun reflecting off that finish hold? That's dual textured. So there's friction in some areas of the hold and no friction in others. So that entire thing is shiny. Yeah, super, super shiny. Just that little crimp has been screwed onto it. That's what you're going for. But if you miss it, um, you can't just grab the shiny part. Things get very difficult. Almost has the texture of uh, your countertop, marble countertop at home is what Yeah, I would, like. I would equate it to like trying to climb a, a slide in your local park. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Very slippery. Very slippery, I'll give you that. Finn Battersby and Chloe Kim. Well, Finn has had quite a bit of success over his career locally. You know, fourth at our Open Nationals in 2020. 13th and 21. He's been around the podium a couple times. Here we go. Clock is now ticking. And already Chloe Kim has gotten to work. Well, she looks like maybe she's going to try and take the dynamic out of this by just doing a bit of a left, to, like a kind of a tip over. That's really good stuff from Chloe Kim. Completely different approach to that boulder. Slowing it right down. Getting that same heel hook and up. Ooh, you see that? Yeah. Even there, sliding around on the top. And pulling up high in to make sure. So that boulder's climbing. Maybe a little bit on the soft side for how it looks, and the men's boulder is absolutely a punch in the nose. That thing is crazy. Uh, this one might be a bit of a wake-up call to how well you bend your arms. So this is, uh, you were asking in the break, you know, if it goes from easiest to most difficult across one to four, and while there will sometimes be, you know, a boulder that is, you know, climbs a little bit easier and boulders that climb a little bit harder, the goal is to make them all of about the same difficulty and then just test different skill sets and then the climbers will show you where their skill sets are by making the boulder look easy or hard. And so what do you think this uh, this problem is right now? What what skill set do you believe this one lends itself to? Uh, this is power. So what have you got in your in your pulling muscles? And then you see how far that, when they pull out of the pockets, the thing gets back up there, making the move to that red underplane. There's so much internal shoulder strength that needs to be in place here to hold that position. Mm. So this is a straight power boulder in that move. And you've got to hold a, a really wide box. So we talk about putting climbers in small boxes where the hands and feet are very close together and it's uncomfortable and very wide boxes where you are essentially at the end range. You watch, um, maybe gymnastics on the rings is a good example. When they get all the way out into the Iron Cross, if you go try that at your local gymnastics club, your shoulders will kind of pop up over right. your head. Sure. This is that just turned 45 degrees. So they're trying to hold fingertip to fingertip across the shoulder line. Super powerful movement. And then now you're not even in full hand grip. You're just on the end of both fingers. And that's just one portion of this problem. I think that, that needs to be very much noted here. It's like that's, that's just one small piece of this puzzle. Yeah, it's, uh, we haven't described the whole thing. You right. still have to pull through the beginning. And every time you have to do these first two moves, although they're not quote unquote difficult, you're on two fingers, you're out, you're at you know, full compression. So you're working to get there, and it just slowly stops you. That move right there, to get that locked in just seems so incredibly difficult. And I would imagine, too, like your wingspan, like how, how far apart your arms are is definitely going to play into this. Yeah, there's lots of different advantages and disadvantages in climbing for you know, body type. And good look at him trying to get his, he's popping his left hand up while he's moving to shorten the space. 
Uh, wingspan is a big advantage. You want to be uh, longer fingertip to fingertip than you are tall, because being a tall climber isn't necessarily a good thing. Sure. So if you're of average height and above average wingspan, you're in a good spot. So with seven seconds left on the clock, Finn is going to call that one. Mm -hmm. And put everything into it, and that's going to sap energy going Whoa, into boulder five. number four. So the combined Whoa, effect of all the boulders plus the climbing this morning, mm -hmm. the fatigue sets in, and that's something the better conditioned you are, the more likely you are to be successful later in the round. So if you're Butendike, getting her shoes on. Timmy Kang back out. And Timmy's sitting at the top of the men's leaderboard, and Sophie perched up with the other women at the top of their leaderboard. So this even, putting their shoes on when they come out, adds you know another minute of focus time. They're now out in front of the crowd. Everybody's looking at you. The music's pumping. You kind of want to get going. Yep. They usually just run out turn around, get right start the boulder, sure. and get right to work. So this is adding a little bit of, hey, you know, we're getting a look at what your, your thought process is. You can't hide much sitting on the mat. So here we go. Let's see if uh, that ice climbing background helps her out here once again. We saw some of the dynamic moves that she did on the previous boulder. Made short work of that one. Actually, short work of both of the first two boulders. Two boulders. Yeah, Sophie, young climber from BC, only 21 years old. Good success on the youth circuit. Timmy just testing the distance. And Sophie there electing to try just to go low. Oh, Timmy off. Oh, thought about saving it, and I think maybe just pulled that left hand out at the last second. That's uh, yeah, if you not keep a good that, save. You want to keep those fingers. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the instinct not to fall, you need to override it because injuries definitely happen. So this approach slightly different again. It's cool Volte though. And Chloe. She's, she's making some some different movements here to try to work this out. So back up through, not taking long rests. Just needs to make that commitment. Oh, Tim Kang. There we go. Fingertip to fingertip. It nice. is uh, hopefully going to make no mistakes on the top. Just making sure, though, the last one, not a giveaway. Timmy's going to get it right. Wants a little love from the crowd. Damn, this is good climbing from him. Let's take a look back and see where everything went right for Tim. Look at that finger strength. And I just see that crafty little toe hook just to make sure that the... the ooh! So getting turned around a little bit. When you almost stick a hold, that's when the weird falls come in. I mean, you have to fully commit to any of these holes, so you can get yourself spun off like a starfish off of, the, off of this wall, for sure. Full commitment definitely comes with consequence. Luckily, the mats, well engineered. She's almost in between. So she tried medium, she's tried big, now she went back to small, so she's really trying a bunch of, now back to big but low, making it work. So four different methods. So if you're finding one that works. So now she has to somehow wedge herself up there to be able to grab that and hold on tight. That's a shoulder extension. And then mistakes from Sophie. The top of the boulder. So that'll be three tops, but she dropped a few tries. So that's going to create some separation at the top of the women's leaderboard. We're done with about a minute left. So it's time to rest. Yeah, that's just throwing just herself in. over there. <laughs> slamming into the red. Great work. Excellent work. The crowd has come back out too. The rain chased everybody off. And now it looks like we got a pretty good crowd here. Out at the bouldering wall. 
built for purpose. So they built it for this event. They put it together, the local company, Delir Escalade, built this wall uh, on site this week. Brand new setup in the back too, so this was almost a bit of an experiment for them and a really, really good wall builder and uh, exactly the right kind of thing for an event like this. And as big, clean angles. We've been kind of talking about it um, through the entire broadcast, through Skate and through this, as, as how, how much Montreal uh, embraces these sports and creates opportunities for people. I mean, just, just right over here at the Olympic Center, there's a climbing wall. So you were telling me there's some, some actual pieces of granite that they've mm -hmm. actually... Um, you know, pulled out of a quarry and put, and they kind of move around Montreal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, those boulders stay where they are, the granite one. ones, but there's a, a portable climbing wall sitting beside it. They move around. Montreal is probably currently the hub, most probably the most gyms in Canada centered here, um, which brings diversity in manufacturing of holds, in route setting, in climbers, in training. So a lot of really good climbers in Montreal, and the scene, the vibe here is really dense population, just brings lots of climbers, lots of gyms. Lots of companies, and it's awesome to see. And so, as we're looking right here, we have two distinct, just distinctly different body types. And we had talked earlier about how just his slow, methodical movements combined with his strength, the long arms. You were saying earlier that it's you want to have an, an average body size with a really big wingspan. Mm -hmm. Then we have someone like this who's quite a lot bigger than the average climber. Mm -hmm. So how does that play, how does that play in? It's, uh, if you, it's strength to weight. So if you're a, a little bit, you know, if you pack on a little bit more muscle, then you're gonna be stronger, so you just have to make sure your fingers can keep up. Sure. Um, so what the general rule is, you work with what you got. I always joke when I'm coaching that I wouldn't want to be any taller. I'm only, I'm not even, I'm not quite 5'9" but I have, my arm span is three inches longer than my height. So I wouldn't want to be any taller. Sometimes I would, of course. Um, but you work with what you've got, and the longer you've been climbing in your own shape, the better you get at it. So it is interesting to watch junior athletes have success and then come through that period of you know, real growth and putting on real muscle and having to figure themselves back out again. Right. But by this point, when they're climbing sort of here, you know, early 20s, they're where they're at, and Guy is one of those climbers who's just getting stronger. Well, it's all, you know, you have to take into consideration as well is, is muscle mass weighs a lot. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to have a lot of weight on you in this sport, correct? Mm -hmm. Unless you can manage it. Mm. So, you're right, most climbers are on the slighter side, but there are a few who make it work. But you're absolutely correct. As a general rule, you don't want to pack on too much muscle mass. Uh, our goal is to be um, strong and powerful without being you know, too big. Mm -hmm. But you still have to have, you know, you need to have those shoulders. You need to work through strong lats. Yeah. Uh, getting a little more height. So just you need to commit to the jump, and then she's going to scamper up the top of this boulder. This is of no concern. That was power. Yeah. So that's power born out of a little bit of frustration. Frustration <laughs> is, man, why did I? Okay, I'm gonna get this done. Anger can create a very deep energy source if you can tap it the right way. So that was her going, you know, undershooting a couple times on the power side, and then here, just full commitment. And you see no swing. So yeah, Bevet is such a powerful climber. There was no, the way we saw Sophie sort of come around the corner, Bevet just, as if there was a board behind her stopping that swing. That's something that, I mean, she is probably one of the more powerful climbers in, you know, climbing in Canada right now. And, when she gets to dial it in on a boulder, she's really happy about it. Guy now, after getting quite close and even having one save, so we came down and reset. He's now staring down the barrel of maybe only one more try. There he does. Fingertips in, strong. And it was the slowest pull of all his attempts. A really good look. You see there's a hold making this hold worse. So the hold they put on for the finish was too good, but they liked the shape. So there's a little black oh, hold in there, and he's gonna get clever with a little heel hook behind. Guy McNamee pulling out a few tricks. 10 seconds to go. Hey, when you do the boulder, it doesn't matter how much time it takes you. That is an important top for Guy McNamee to stay up on the leaderboard. Yeah, and I, I thought this was fascinating. Just the end bit here. Trying to get, you know, that leverage to pop up there and just 
basically squishing his heel into that little hold where his fingers are right now. Anything to stop you from that, yeah, like, like right here he knows he's got it, but there, just gonna stop the right side of his body from pivoting out. Uh, I love that nod to the camera up top too. The more experience you gain climbing on televised events, the more you know where the cameras are. Uh, and I've, I love seeing people look to those cameras and you know a little bit of nod. Yeah, I know what's up. Yeah. Being aware of the camera at all times. Patrick Klingler back out and Lucas Uchida. Petra will be looking for a flash to stay in front of Chloe at the top of the leaderboard. As Chloe's been making short work of basically everything that's been put in front of her mm -hmm. here. Just mowing through boulders. Lucas Uchida looking for some focus. That uh, the thousand yard stare. Just looking at something in his mind's eye, getting ready right, to get on ready. this boulder. Petra, I think, putting on uh, some liquid chalk first. What is the what's the difference between liquid chalk and the regular chalk? Uh, the liquid chalk is going to have alcohol base in it, and it's a different mixture. And when the alcohol dries out, it leaves a, a very thin film sort of on your palms. And uh, the loose chalk in your bag it, uh, sort of drifts off your hands a little bit easier. But when it comes off your left, the base from the liquid chalk stays longer. Mm -hmm. so lots of comp climbers, especially in warm conditions, will put that liquid chalk on. I mean, spinning out of the left side of your frame into the right side of your frame, Lucas Uchida. Come on. Come on. Yeah. coordination. Going for it straight away here. Uh, so that's the most impressive thing we've seen on this boulder yet. Um, that is really, really hard to do. He's going to find that same little tricky back heel. That is, I, I would like to see that two or three times so that we can appreciate. That was unreal. So quickly. Split. Yeah. And the left left foot, right hand doing fundamentally different things at exactly the same time. Lucas Uchida, fantastic. Watch either the right hand or the left foot. That was insane. Lucas, you're good at climbing. We'll give you that. Petra, uncharacteristically, is having issues with the dynamic start of this boulder. Still plenty of time left on the clock, though. A little over two minutes, 30 seconds left. Every time you see them look to their left and right, there's a clock. They have a clock available to them. So she'll have looked over there to see how much time she has on. It's gonna go. I love that. It's basically just full balance work. Now stuck. Still, oh. yeah, not. Oh, I can, I can hear, you can feel that oh, feeling. So not quite high enough to get really established on that left hand. Um, she needs just that little push from a toe. So she might either make a footwork adjustment, or I would think, Patrick, just jump. Yeah, it seems like that the explosion off of that first hole is how everyone is, is making that first move happen. Yeah, the crowd is going to give her a little boost. Oh boy. There we go. Just, uh, yep. Let's make sure a couple deep breaths, and she is going to go back. A little bit slower, just hunting any advantage. I can't, that's really hard to do on this angle. Wow. Oh, just, she, Todd, she's probably a finger's width too low on the left hand. That's probably the difference that we're looking at for her being able to control that left hand and swing out and not. So your advice right now would be to take the other method of, of basically just swinging over there. Yeah. That's what I would want to like, see. Yeah, there she goes. Yeah. I would, oh, I, wow. She's strong enough to miss and get it. So if I'm her coach, I'm uh, I'm putting a little asterisk beside Boulder Three in my notes and saying Petra. So even there, yeah, shake of the so head. Cool. Really cool to see her just adjust and immediately execute. It's like she wanted to do it her way. She didn't want to do it. <laughs> do it yeah. like everyone else was doing it. Yes, you're you were. Spot on because you can get stubborn. You can get tunnel vision. You put your blinders on. You're like, this is going to work. This is going to work. I said it was going to work. I know it's going to work. This is going to work. And you have to, you have to have the internal coach on your shoulder go. Just do it this way. Do the right. Sometimes thing. the obvious way is the easiest way. Mm -hmm. So we have a look here at the crowd. Like I said, you can see some blue skies out there. The clouds have parted. Cleared up nicely behind us right now. I don't know if you can hear it through the audio, but skaters are practicing on the street course, so the vibe is returning. Mm -hmm. 
It's uh, a beautiful Montreal evening, as expected. There we go. Alana, yep, now sporting a bandage on her left shin. She would have picked up the walls. I mean, you went and touched them. The, the, the friction on the walls is quite sharp. Yeah, it's like, so. it's like grip tape. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a better example than the sandpaper. It, it is, and you know, you grate along the sides, you're gonna lose some skin on other body parts too. So um, you put all that out of your mind in competition. So you, you get scraped up because it's by any means necessary. And it's funny, you know, we you kind of skipped over it a little bit earlier, but mentioned it. They do a bit of blood cleaning because your fingers, like a lot of these guys are bleeding because they're putting so much pressure on mm -hmm. their fingertips. So they actually do go up and clean the blood out of the holds, which I think is uh, gross, but also very, very necessary. <laughs> yes. And you'll see, um, you'll see tape on their fingers. Uh, so once you're bleeding somewhere, you got to stop it for, you know, that you know, the rest sure. of your round, oh, absolutely. but climbing with tape on, uh, you lose a little bit of that tactile control, so you lose a little bit of that friction. So they they don't like climbing with Whoa. tape on. Oh, Alana going through option A1, which was a sort of a hop drop, and Charles, after displaying really no issues in the power bank, just shorted that move between the pockets. I was surprised to see him not stick that. I just, I promise you the distance between the start and the footholds in those blue holds uh, is farther than these climbers are making it look. Mm -hmm. There's quite a bit of work to do. Well, you see the amount of swing. Here she goes, she wants to do the stretch over. She's like, can I go back? Where am I? No, I've left it, yeah. No, I'm going back. And you, they do that because the tries matter. So she yeah. doesn't want to drop off and start again. Interesting. Just sussing out all of the feels. Alana, yep. Yeah. Yeah, there she goes as well. Come on. It's just going to be making sure. Finish it off. Super strong. So it's also fascinating to see the different styles that these climbers have when approaching any of these problems. And she's so experienced, uh, as I said, you know, went to, went to the Olympics, but has been climbing on the World Cup for a few seasons now. Um, you know, pulled in some really good appearances, made every semifinal in 2021, came 10th in Salt Lake City uh, earlier this year. Super experienced, so she, as much as anyone in this final, is going to be able to make an adjustment in the four-minute span and get things, the ship righted. And Charles now 0 for 3 and electing to completely change how he's going to go about it. But he's going to have to swap because he's got his right hand where he wants his left hand to be. So he's going to have to do a little bit more fidgety work to set up this move. Not just to get it done, but just more time spent on the fingertips. Oh. It's going to bring this. So an interesting twist. If Charles Barron can't solve this, He's going to flip the leaderboard basically on its head. So he's got about a minute left on the clock here to get this done. Or he gives up his lead. Just taking a moment. You see he's breathing heavy. Look at the clock. Charles Barron, don't wait too long. So the game here, Todd, is if you wait down to like 20 seconds and you slip on the first move, you've lost the try. So you want to get on with 45 seconds or so, because if you make a mistake in the first two moves, you've got time to reset and get it on again. So he's doing this again, it completely crossed up the first move so that he can do this easier, but then has to make you know, a one, two, three adjustment. He's going to bump out. And he's got to bump in. It's a lot of time on those left hand fingers. Uh, 20 seconds left in the clock. He's going to make a move. He needs to make it now. And Charles Barron tries to go foot hand, and he's going to miss it. You can see that. Boom. A bit of a rueful look at the clock, and an I'm done. On this side of things, sure. you always want to finish on a high note. Yeah, and as we saw earlier, uh, you know, we had that, that false finish by Taya, which definitely is going to hurt her. Mm-hmm. But still, she's had a really strong showing out here today, just as far as what she's gotten done and how quickly she's solved some of these problems. Yeah, she would be uh, definitely sitting in a better position with that top, but she showed some real perseverance to keep working through boulders two and three. All right, so here we go. Boulder number four, the final boulder of 
this evening's competition. Taya Wolf getting up through into the zone. First try, and this is a funky finish here. The top of this hold isn't good, so they're only going to be using the underside and trying to find good tension in there. So Taya Wolf is going to flash the fourth boulder very quickly. She's going to go then and get a seat in the chairs. And the, one of the nice things about this is as they finish, they get to watch the rest of the competitors come through. So they get to cheer for their friends as they come up through the last five climbers. Now this was this looked relatively easy for her to solve this. It did, and I, looking at this boulder, thought they would have more issues making that first move. And then here, the heel, I mean, the heel is just barely in there. You see a little cam between the heel and the toe and pressing up into that isn't always the easiest thing on a slab. It's pretty easy to get tipped backwards. Look, she blocked it down. Look at this, that's fascinating. He's basically just pinching that between his thumb and his finger. That's incredible amount of control in that space. And we, he's, uh, that's a really good look at it. it it's, it's a terrible, terrible hold. It's there to, oh, does take the lean over move. Solomon Barth is going to get boulder number four done. A handful of tries to solve the beginning, so maybe four or five tries, I think, to get up there. But as you say, making that zone hold, just, it's like a slippery, bad, small thumb knuckle pinch. Sometimes we call it a thunder cling. If they go up thumb first, it's like a thumb under cling. Yeah, it's basically, you know, if you're at home and you're wondering what's that, what that's like, it's like, Go open your silverware drawer. Now hang off of that silverware drawer 15 feet off the ground by your thumb and forefinger. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. That's about right. Solomon there, wave to the crowd. When you're at the top of the wall, you want to take in the view across the crowd. Well earned applause. The lake has not subsided, so we're dealing with the lake still in front of the last boulder over here. You know, that's the that's, master drive. That's quality real estate here in Montreal at this point. Lakefront property. Lakefront property right here. Come and make the most of it, Montreal. And Chloe Kim right here, she's just been on a tear this evening, currently in the lead. She's made quick work of every boulder. Climbs out of Seattle for the Vertical World team, and said she's 16 years old, so very composed. And with all of the Youth Nationals and Youth World Championships, um, you get to be quite experienced by 16. However, you're still 16 years old. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if you were winning international competitions at 16 years old, by all means, put your hand up. Um, I was not, so that's uh, the youngsters crushing it is always good to see. In Battersby, a little brush. And then also just remembering, this is the, the boulder that's been the farthest from their memory. They've been, they saw it now you know, well over an hour ago. So when they, take, when they take that big brush out there and they brush these holds, is, is it habit for some just to do that? Like whether or not they need it, is it they just, they go out and they just kind of, it's just part of the routine of getting into, into their zone for them? Yeah, it's, uh, it's something they do as a reflex action almost, and it forces you to take a breath. Forces you to have a look, otherwise you might just be a little bit too tempted to get on the boulder. So if you're in your mind, part of your plan is come out, shoes on, turn around, chuck my hands, brush the holds, take a breath, and then start. You tend to get into those habits. And here we go, Chloe working her way up through. There we go. And man, two attempts on that one. She's psyched, so she knows how important tops in short order will be with the likes of Alana Yip and Petra Klingler biting at her heels. So this first move on this problem for the men is all about a muscle up, it seems like. Yeah, a gross muscle up on like a pre not a great angle. No. So well, well, well past vertical. There we then, go. There's that pinch hold. Just, so there are no extra footholds. If you're looking to see maybe if there was a tiny jib like we saw on boulder number one, uh, nothing doing. So they're just yeah. using the friction of those volumes. Um, a Montreal company, Dimension Volumes, makes these. So, you know, as you were alluding to earlier, when you bring a core of a sport together and you embrace it, you grow the whole industry. So uh, wall companies, lots of gyms in Montreal, and uh, Dimension Volumes is a, a prolific maker of these big wooden volumes. And they're... 
they've changed the way we set routes. You know, you would have had to have found two big holds, mm -hmm. and then you would have been you know, much closer to the wall, so you might not have been able to build this style of move. But because we were basically putting a wall on the wall, we're now able to subtly change the angles, and you get faced with holders like this. And you can't see it on your screen at home, but that is not straight up and down. That is over vertical. Mm -hmm. about, about 10 or 15 degrees, I think. And then, you know, we should get a good look at the side of the wall. Just sort of show you how difficult this might be. So it gets steeper as they go to the left. And this is in about the 10 degree section in Battersby. A minute to go. Just needs to be a little more careful with his footwork standing on these volumes. This movement right here, though, is crazy. Yes. It really is. All right, that's fine. Come on. And just as soon as you apply the wrong amount of pressure, keep an eye on those toes. Come there we go, Finn. All right. Yes. Now he's going to do yes. carefully to the top. Please with that. Nice so done. Overall, I think he will have hoped he had a slightly better day. But two tops and two zones, or four zones. Nothing to really complain about unless you're only looking to be on the podium. Yeah, and that race for the podium here today is it's very tight, as we said, on the women's side of things. Chloe Kim is looking like the one who's in the lead right now. And who's leading for the men once again? And then Timothy Kang is sitting at the top, still to come out just now along with Sophie Butendijk. So a top here from Tim Kang is a gold medal in the bag. Everything else is creating uncertainty on the men's leaderboard. Sophie Butendijk can put herself in position to fight for a podium spot, and it's gonna come down to attempts between Alana and Petra, but she cannot catch Chloe. So here's a question for you. So does, does Kang know that he is in this position right now? Does he carry that weight knowing that he is in the lead into this last boulder? Probably. So it'll depend how much they talked about in secondary isolation when they're all back together. You know, which boulder did you do, which did you not? Um, not everybody wants to know what everyone else is doing. The crowd is big, but the whole place is loud. So it's not as obvious as at a gym where it reverberates around. He knows he's got three and suspects at least, knowing how strong his compatriots are, that they might also have three if they haven't told him. So uh, sometimes you get in your head and think, well, if I've top three boulders, then these guys have top three boulders right. too. So I'm in a do or die situation. I need four to win. I would just wonder that as being the leader right now, you know, how would you feel knowing that you, you need to top this and not make any mistakes and it's mm -hmm. over for everyone else. Yeah, it, uh, it interesting side of pressure. And Sophie Budendijk just hunting friction there and unable to make it stick. Watch, it's been very interesting to see the slip-offs over on the left-hand side of your screen. Just the initial pop-up into this, it doesn't seem like he can get grip. And he can't grip and then he can't get his shoulders turned over into you know, past that tipping point of the muscle up. So he's struggling with the right amount of momentum to get above his shoulders, but if you push too hard, you slip. So this is, although it doesn't look delicate, it's a bit of an intricate movement. And you see he's changing even how high is let, like the options of where he puts his hand. So moving your hand you know, a half an inch higher or lower in or out is gonna change all of those angles. So those micro adjustments get in your head when you're not being successful. A move like that. So, so taking into considering, on. I mean, this, there's a lot on the line right here for mm -hmm. Timothy Kang. If he cannot pull this off, it's going to throw a big wrench into what we assumed was the final outcome of this event. Mm -hmm. And the long arms might be doing it in a little bit. Sometimes longer arms mean more travel required. And Timmy's going to go face out. So there's an old adage in climbing that Timmy knows, a dancer on the back of his mind that says, when in doubt, face out. So if it's not working, and you think you might be able to do the problem facing the crowd, maybe that's the solution. It looked like he was going to try it. Timmy just needs, man, he's got to fight over this. So yeah, long arms is not maybe helping him, but he's a strong dude. 
just looking to get that first explosive move out of the way. And there's nothing to push off. The bottom volume is even lower angle. So you can't really push. It's a, it's a hop and it's a muscle up. And Timmy is fighting it right now. This is, and now he's thinking about, I'm pretty sure I was, at, not at, if not at the top, in the running. And this might be taking me out of a podium, Minute let alone a gold medal. On the clock right now. Tim Kang, dig deep. Here we go. He can feel the pressure is on. And, and now he's mm, looking at the clock. Come on. It's just. Man, he is just having a tough time figuring out this first move. And you have to convince yourself not to throw yourself at it in that. Mm -hmm. You can in see, rapid succession. You, you can tell his moves are becoming more and more frantic just by his body language here. He knows what's at stake. And he, the top of the boulder is hard. So once he sticks this, he's got work to do. Tim Kang coming up on 15 seconds. This is a now or never moment, and it has implications on the podium. Timmy Kang, perfect to this point. One last attempt at it. Even a zone here is gonna matter. Right, Tim David. Kang, a disappointed smile. Wow. Unable. So now the situation has completely changed. Completely changed. Unable to figure out that first move. Right, Obviously Three, incredibly four, difficult five, and incredibly five, one, precise two, series of moves is what it's gonna have to take to get you into the momentum off of that problem. Mm -hmm. And he now both for, gets to slash has to sit right, and, and watch. watch the next four climbers come across and do this boulder and maybe slowly bump him off of the podium chairs. So the athletes get to sit and watch. They don't have to go back behind the wall after their last try. Sometimes it's a blessing to watch. Sometimes it's a curse to see your victory slipping away. Um, there are, even if he had got the zone, he would have forced a lot more effort here. So Guy and Lucas one, one, two, and Charles can all take a swing at the gold medal spot with the top of this boulder. Here we go, Guy, taking a look at this over here on your left-hand side of the screen, that first move, crucial. And on the right-hand side of your screen, already an explosive move, heading up. Babette, who? Babette has already... Yeah, no problem for Babette, but no joy, because she knows she's out of the podiums. So, the look oh, on her, oh, very yeah. good climbing, but one mistake, and we see Guy getting it solved. Yeah, it's that slow, meticulous movement that's doing it for him. Yeah, he's been looking good on the slightly lower angles. And this move here is... Oh! So you notice how the two holds are, there's two holds there, one beside the other, in order to create a thin space in between. So if you overshoot, it's like, you know, bumping your knuckles off right. the wrong side and of something. You don't want to wedge your fingers in there either. That sounds like a horrible idea. <laughs> so you have to be very, the root setters do that to create precision. So they're wanting to, you to grab it without over, if you overshoot and slide back, you have no, you've run out of the, the right space, but You've got to get it spot on. So they do that just to force precision. Otherwise, this move would be substantially easier. Here we go. Guy, once again, trying to size this up. He got it straight away. And does, you, he still has to make contact. He has to put both feet on. The, so if you jump from the ground to get established on the hands, yeah, you get he still has to there. put his feet on the, the, uh, the bottom hold before he's allowed to leave and continue up the boulder problem. You see he does this, and then having similar issues to Timmy now after having done it once. So once again, explain to the viewers at home, the blue tape there means what? One limb, wherever there is a stripe of tape. So four pieces of tape, four limbs in contact. You see two on the bottom hold, so both feet in this case would be on that bottom hold, and then one hand on each. You could 
if he wanted, could put his right foot up and then put his left foot and his left hand down low so if you can create any orientation you want. You just have to have contact with contact. all four limbs. And you must show contact before you can leave the start hold. So you can't use the ground as momentum generating and to carry on. So you must be in control on the wall. You just got to touch the left foot. Oh, oh, you see his hands just sliding down the angle. One minute left on the clock. So he's going to try. Can I do this? If he can reach down. But now desperation setting in for Guy McNamee. This last problem is very problematic. Yes, oh. it is. What an awkward way to start a climb. Mm -hmm. it, it's so, it doesn't, it doesn't seem like that when you're over there by the bouldering wall, but when you realize that the climbers have to start with both feet on that bottom boulder. 20 seconds left on the clock. You gotta try one more time, Guy. There's nothing to save your energy for. Does he have it? Does he have it? Can he reach? Oh, he's got oh, his he finger does. on it. I don't think you can top this boulder in five seconds, but in order to establish that star position, we are not going to see anything like this today after that. So the clock is going to route on Guy McNamee. I don't know if he'll hear the judges. So sometimes we get a finish of a boulder right. all for nothing. But it is for the fans. Yeah, the fans for, are going to love it. It's for himself at this point. The frustration of trying to get up there, he knows. He knows the boulder was in his ability. Just too many tries to get to start. So that becomes a, a devilishly clever piece of route setting to separate these climbers Absolutely. on the last boulder like that. I don't think that. there'll be any complaining by anyone about these boulders being too easy, with this one being the capper for the evening. Yeah, and you saw even there, a, a super common for climbers to just not want to stop looking at the thing that did them wrong. So Guy, even walking over off the side of the mm -hmm. mat, looking over his shoulder at that boulder. All right, well, when we come back, the conclusion of the men's and women's bouldering competition here from Jackalope. Petra Klingler and Lucas Uchida. So on the women's side, Petra with, if she flashes the boulder, she's gonna put herself in position to be in second place awaiting Alana's attempt. Uh, and then she's got a couple of attempts to play with. We'll get down to that. We won't sort of do all the math for you, but Petra ideally flashes the boulder. And Lucas on the other hand, um, with a third top in a zone, puts himself in possibility of third place, depending on what Charles does coming out of the gate. So, still room on the podium, still boulders to be climbed. All right, clock is now running, and we get to see the great equalizer here of this start. Oh, and he's got to get them both on at the same time. He does. Petra, no mistakes on the right of your screen on this slab boulder. He's going to get that heel hook locked in nice and high. Bam, a flash from Petra. Easy breezy, Petra Klingler. And Lucas Uchida just maybe going. Looking for option A. Not only odor, but actual strength. Actual strength. A good look at the block that the root setters have put on this side pull they're going for. Look at his thumb is just wedged yeah. underneath there. And he's going to, oh my gosh. Lucas with light footwork, but not quite enough left hand stick. And you even saw him sort of swing, like wind up with the thumb as his only real point of contact, keeping him on the wall. Love it. Love movements like that. Love holds like that. Obstacle. And Lucas is taking those deep breaths, taking that little bit of extra time to rest. So important, staring at the objective the whole time. And look how easy he's done that move compared to That's, basically everyone else. It's so crazy to see some people just have the 
you know, most difficulty with something that just seems so easy for others? A really good look at the Thunder Cling. A little pinch on there. Wow. A measured amount of power through there. Look at that. Really well done. And he's going to be smooth and careful for the top. Lucas Uchida with the top of boulder number four. So far looking the best of everyone on that boulder has put himself into, at the moment, gold medal spot. With only one to come, he's definitely got himself a podium. There's a big smile. So earlier, pretty guarded in terms of that emotion. Look at that right there. That was so insane. Very precise. Just came from climbing um, the hardest boulder in the country outside uh, just about a week and a half ago. So he's in peak shape for overall climbing, but outdoor and indoor don't transfer to each other as much as you would think. He just knows he's had a bit of a confidence boost in the last couple of weeks, putting down one of the hardest boulders uh, in the country. All right, here we go. The final pair to take on these two problems. And that will do it. And we will have a men's and women's champion here at Jackalope 2022 in four minutes. Four minutes or less. Alana Yip looking composed. So a flash here from Alana is going to put her in a tie for first place. But we'll take it on the count back. So a gold medal on the line for Alana with a flash. And Charles Barron needs a top to get on the podium. Let's see what we get. Four minutes. The whole night comes down to this. It always feels like at the start that we've got so much climbing to look forward to. And just like that, we're it's, down to one it's, it's over so quickly. It's engaging. It gets you excited. You know, there's lots to see. So it is. And coming from someone like myself who's completely outside this realm and you know, come from a completely different set of sports. It's fascinating to me because you can, as a as a person that loves just outdoor activities, the amount of strength that it takes to do this and patience and planning, it, it's unreal. Yeah, the layers really are what add to the whole thing. Look at that toe hook, nifty work from Alana to make sure she doesn't come away from the wall. Yeah, she's... And Charles, wow. on a flash! So Alana, yep. Is going to top first try. Charles Barron is going to top first try with medals on the line. That was incredible. Really good stuff. Charles found himself into a gold with that performance, as did Alana Yep. So a couple of gold medal flashes to close out this 2022 Jack Lope contest. That's kind of how you want to cap it. Absolutely. To save the best to last. That, once again, I've got to say that, that the beginning to the men's obstacle here in the fourth round this is the leaderboard. So Alana Yip with the win, Chloe Kim coming in second, and Petra Klinger in third. But it was a great showing from all the women today. A couple, uh, a couple uncharacteristic bobbles from some of them, but mm -hmm. still just showing such strength and such poise on these boulders. Yeah, that's competition for you, and uh, so it's disappointing to be fourth, fifth, and sixth. However, the flip side of that is sixth place out of you know, on the women's side, I think there were 30 plus climbers, is that's a good showing. So getting out of a semi, getting into the final, that's the hard work. So if you made a final, that's a checkbox. All right, and on the men's side of things, this is how the final looked. Obviously, we had some showmanship there, some disappointment on the final, uh, you know, the final obstacle, but Charles Barron coming away with the win. Lucas Uchida with just kind of that disappointing you know, that one squeaker and then Timothy Kang also, that's the top three.